Hey guys, so today I'm filming the last video in my beginner's guide to makeup series and this is bittersweet. I had so, so much fun creating all the videos for this series, but it was a lot of work. I wanted to thank you all so, so much for your very generous, sweet comments on this series. It meant a lot to me. And this video is going to be a beauty Q and A. Depending on the length, I may split it up into two videos. And I wanted to thank you guys for leaving me questions. I really, really appreciated it because honestly, I wasn't sure if I would even get any questions or enough to make a video. So I do really appreciate that and I want to make sure to get to every single question and I will leave your usernames right here. So let's just get started with the first question which is from Chris Valdez. The question is when did you start wearing makeup and what is your go-to makeup look? So I started wearing makeup in I think eighth grade. I remember having this color workshop quad and I would wear pink and silver eyeshadow every day. Yes, pink and silver. Sounds pretty cute, wouldn't you think? Not exactly, but I used to wear that like every single day. And then in high school, I wore eyeliner, mascara, and eyeshadow every day, and then concealer if I needed it. But I honestly had really good skin in high school, so mostly just eye makeup. And then once I got to my freshman year in high school, I started wearing a full face of makeup. I really got into makeup from my friend Shelby. She taught me about it. She showed me a couple people on YouTube and then I just fell in love and here I am today. Every single day that I am going out anywhere, I basically wear a full face of makeup, which I am happy with. I really, really like it. I think it's fun. So that's kind of like my makeup journey. So what is your go-to makeup look? For me, this is kind of hard because I try to switch up all my makeup. I do monthly makeup baskets every month to make sure everything in my collection is being used. So I can't really tell you my go-to blush or lip color, but my go-to eyeshadow look is absolutely using the Balm Meat Matte Nude Palette. I bet many of you probably guessed that. And I use Matte Malloy on my lid and as a brow bone highlight, Matte Rosen in the crease and Matte Sing as a transition color. That is a nice nice warm tone all matte look. I love it. I think it's gorgeous and I can pair bright lips and bright cheeks with it which I love. So that is my go-to eye look. Next I have a question from my friend Grace. Thank you so much Grace. Um, I really really like this question and I hope I can give you a decent answer. Grace asked when you blend your eyeshadow say on the outer V and then use a blending brush to blend where exactly are you blending? The edges or the whole outer V? That is a good question. I am not the best at blending. I'm definitely not a I'm definitely not anywhere near as good as Jaclyn Hill. She makes blending look so effortless. Just watch one of her tutorials if you want to see how to blend. But for me, I just blend the outer edges and you can either use a brush with no product on it or take a lighter matte eyeshadow and help blend that out, which is what I do. And I only go around the edges. I honestly also think it depends on the eyeshadow that you use because some eyeshadows will blend away completely. So I usually always just do the outer edge unless I feel like it's a little too intense and then I will kind of fade it into the crease color. But honestly, just test it out and see what you like best, what you think the best result is, and sometimes it does depend on the eyeshadow. But if you guys wanna see how to blend beautifully, watch a Jaclyn Hill tutorial because she makes blending look effortless. Next, I have a couple questions from my friend Jean who always leaves me the sweetest comments. So she asked me, what sparked your interest in makeup? So like I said, it really was my friend Shelby in college and also, the summer before my freshman year in college, I was looking up on YouTube a music video for a Christina Aguilera song and in the suggested videos on the right, it had a Panacea 81 tutorial for that makeup of the video and I was, I just clicked on it because I thought the makeup was so pretty and then like all summer I watched her tutorials which I still think are incredible. So I really only watched her and then when I got to college I met my friend Shelby, like I said, was very into makeup she showed me Lauren Noir, who used to be called Lauren is okay, who is still one of my absolute favorites. I'm so obsessed with her. And then from there, I just started watching more people on YouTube. Blair Fowler, Elle Fowler were the ones that were really popular at that time. Next question is, who are your favorite beauty gurus to follow on YouTube? This is kind of hard for me. And I honestly do not follow the most popular people 
because I feel like sometimes those people are ingenuine. I'm not trying to call anybody out right now, but some people that are super popular, I do not follow because all their videos are sponsored. I don't feel like they're genuine, so I do not follow them. But my favorites, I love Jaclyn Hill. She is perfection. I love It's Kirsten. I love Samantha Riley. I love Coffee Break with Danny, Miss Lola Lynn, Beauty Buzz Hub. I love Shades of Cassie. I love Young, Wild, and Polished. There are so, so many people. Crystal is 007. She's incredible. There are so many people. I actually am going to do a video all about my favorite YouTubers. I watched a tag a long time ago called My Favorite Beauty Guru 4 and I've been like putting it off but I'm gonna do that and hopefully be able to talk about all of my favorites. So those were just a few of the many many people that I'm subscribed to and love. Jean also asked me what was my worst makeup misstep and I've made a lot of makeup mistakes. Even when I look back at my old videos to now I'm like disgusted with the way that I looked and just because I didn't know what I was doing and I am not a pro now whatsoever but because of YouTube and just experimenting I have learned more. So I never ever ever used to blend my eyeshadow. It was super super harsh just because I felt like what's the point of blending if it's going to make the eyeshadow just disappear. So now I have learned how to blend what brushes to use to help my look be a bit more soft and still like show up and still look nice. So that was definitely my most biggest makeup misstep and also getting my face to match my neck. Being super pale this is a struggle whenever I try a new foundation or a new powder. So those are probably my two biggest makeup missteps. Jean also asked me if I had $500 to spend on high-end makeup, what would it be? And this question just makes me so excited because if I had $500 to just spend on makeup like at one time, that would be amazing. I feel like I wouldn't be able to do it, honestly. Like I will go into Sephora, I'll swatch stuff and be like, uh, I don't think that's worth the money and then I'll leave. Like I do that all the time. I have such a hard time committing. I have terrible buyer's remorse. But since this is just pretend money and this is pretend makeup, then I can do this, I believe. I think I would buy a lot of things from Becca, the matte primer, the matte foundation, the, um, the full coverage foundation, the highlighter pressed in opal. I would get the Kat Van D foundation and powder. I would, what else would I get? I would get probably some more eyeshadows. I would get the Urban Decay Naked Basics 2. What else, what else? What else is even high-end brands? I might try some Hourglass stuff. Oh yeah, the Hourglass Primer, the Hourglass Foundation. Mostly for me, I really want to try high-end foundations, but I get so scared of paying that much. I would of course probably buy a bunch of backups of my Estee Lauder Double Wear Foundation and I would probably try the concealer and powder as well. I really love face makeup and I would probably try some Dior blushes, maybe some Chanel blushes. You guys know how obsessed I am with blush. And I'd probably get a lot of stuff from MAC because I just love the brand. And then she asked me if I had $100 to spend on drugstore makeup, what would I buy? And this was kind of hard for me because I'm trying to think of what I like and want from a drugstore that I don't already have. I would probably buy some more Milani blushes. I would probably get some more those Maybelline new creamy matte lipsticks. I would get some more of those. I'm wearing one today. I love it. But I'd probably get some more of those. I'd get some stuff from NYX because NYX is like my favorite drugstore brand. And what else would I buy? I'd probably buy nail polishes like Zoya OPI and China Glaze. And yeah, I think that's it. Um, I'm just trying to think right on the spot right now and I'm trying to think of what's out. But yeah, that's probably it. I probably try mascaras too. I used to be a big mascara junkie and now I only have one or two open at a time. So those were amazing questions, Jean. Thank you so much. Those are really fun to answer and very tricky as well. Then I have a question from Meg Carr. She says, what's your go-to out the door makeup routine? Um, at the end of this month, you will see a tutorial on my no makeup makeup look. So I will show you in that video. And she asked where I live in the US, how old am I? And then asked me to do some one brand tutorials. I have done a NYX one brand tutorial. It was only 90% NYX, um, but hey, 
that's pretty close to me so I'll link that up here and where do I live in the US I actually live in West Virginia but I do everything in Virginia and I'm not a hillbilly everybody I do not look or sound like a hillbilly so um, I do live in West Virginia though how old are you I am 22 years old my birthday was on August 6th most people think I am much much younger than I am which will hopefully be a compliment in my old age Natalie Claire asked me what is the best setting powder for oily skin I have tried so 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 many powders looking for the answer to this and my absolute favorite holy grail as of now is the NYX stay matte but not flat powder foundation they have a really nice shade selection I do tend to go through them kind of quickly but I love them because they give me awesome coverage which I really do need and they do keep me matte for a good portion of the day without looking flat and cakey. I think those powders are amazing. They cost 10 bucks. You can get them at Ulta. Ulta does not have the full shade range, so I do need to order the lightest shade online, but I love that powder. I think you should definitely try it out. If any of you guys have recommendations for powder for oily skin, please let us both know because I am still looking for the best of the best for oily skin. Then I have a question from LTU Mary Kay TV and she asked me if you could choose only one product of each category of your makeup collection which would you pick? So this is very very tricky it's a good question but it's a hard one. I think I'm going to do a series of my holy grail products so far but I will rattle off some in this video. Foundation, Estee Lauder Double Wear, Concealer, MAC Pro Long Wear, because I can put that on my blemishes and my under eyes, um, and it will be good no matter if my skin is dry or oily. For powder, my NYX Stay Matte But Not Flat, Bronzer, Benefit Hula, Contour Powder, my NYX Blush and Taupe, or the Balm's Bahama Mama. Blushes would be from MAC and the Balm. Highlighter is the Balm Mary Luminizer. Um eyeshadows my mac shadows the ball meat matte nude urban decay eyeliner maybelline line stiletto you guys know that's like my jam mascara is a little bit harder for me um i really really like the maybelline colossal cat eyes for brows anastasia brow wiz and taupe anastasia dip brow pomade and taupe um for lip products my revlon super lustrous lipstick and primrose if i could only wear one lip product for the rest of my life it would be that one the color and the formula is amazing and the next butter glosses are my favorites but i want to do like a whole series on that let me know if you'd be interested in a whole little mini series of my holy grail products Jimma mcnally asked me what nude lip color would you recommend to someone of a mixed race that doesn't wear a lot of makeup so maybelline has a nude lipstick line with um lighter shades and some deeper shades of nude that I think would you could definitely find a color that would look beautiful on you they have a really really nice variety to choose from and they also have some really pretty shades in their new matte line touch of spice I think would be a beautiful nude color for a mixed race or medium skin tone again I want to thank you guys so much for your support and your questions this was so so much fun and thank you for following this series along with me. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please rate, comment, and subscribe, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye guys.